Welcome to Arsenal above all. Well, on Saturday night, it was a red hot atmosphere. Daniel James was the man at the front row with the drum and the flags. He was there making up the noise. It was a red hot atmosphere. But boy, did Arsenal serve an ice cold uh, dish of revenge to the Magpies who were clipped 4-1 in a uh, probably one of the best performances we've seen, the best first half performances we've seen in a long, long, long time. Uh, to talk about that, I've obviously got the two gentlemen in front of me uh, <laughs> to spend, you know, not too much time on it because you know, you know what we're like. We don't like to over egg things and celebrate too much, you know, as Arsenal fans. But uh, before all of that, let's go. Welcome to the show, Neil. How you doing? It's great, great to see you back. It's been uh, it's been a while. I know you've uh, you've been a busy man, obviously. Uh, how you doing? How you feeling, man? Oh, I'm top of the world. I'm top of the world. I really am. It's it's just been the most wonderful start of the year as far as Arsenal is concerned and Arsenal fans are concerned. We should all be beaming from one corner to the other, and uh, it's great to be on a pod with Daniel. I think I've only done one in the past, and so it's it's great to. To share the panel with with the main man, the vlog guy, the <laughs> person. he's here in the flesh. <laughs> the flesh <yeah. laughs> oh, fantastic! Now, great to see you, Neil. Uh, a pleasure to have you on. And yeah, sorry you've not been on with uh, Daniel uh, more often. It's my fault. Uh, so yeah, I'll take that one. But uh, and I've also got yes, the, the main man, the vlog guy, uh, the uh, Arsenal um, number one. Uh, yeah, yes, he was there at the front, you know, with the drums and everything. As I said, Daniel James, Daniel, how you doing, man? You, you still coming down off that, uh, off that high? Yeah, man, I'm still on the high, man. Um, all good, man. And yeah, thanks for having me again, Mike. And yeah, brilliant to see you again, Neil. Has been a, it's been a hot minute, man. <laughs> oh, good stuff. No, I no, appreciate your time as always, guys. So uh, let's get into it. Um, we went into the, you know, we'll, we'll talk about Newcastle. But obviously, before that uh, was the disappointing and frustrating um, performance on Wednesday. In the return uh, to the Champions League uh, knockout stage against Porto. Um, you know, we, we won't go into it too much because, as, as Arteta said, you know, if uh, that, if, if Martinelli makes that pass, and um, it goes to Odegaard or it goes over to Saka or Havertz, who was who were open. And even if that move breaks down, you know, once they get the ball, then it, we, we go we go home with a nil-nil draw and everyone's talking about that's a really mature performance uh, in, in the Champions League. So that was disappointing, obviously. But then to go into uh, a massive game, which we, we know all Arsenal games are massive because of the stakes and who we... Are behind in you know in the table um two monsters um we go into that newcastle game dan um against newcastle where you know, obviously for me it was all about revenge as soon as that as soon as that game finished in november at st james's park i think most of us were looking towards that game saying you know we owe them you know we need to we need to get them back um the club seemed to tap into that as well you know they had the pre match uh, video with with gets was there as well. They had a light show um, and the fireworks and everything. And it, it looked like it was like, um, you know, <laughs> my wife messaged me and said, um, it looks like they've won the game already before. And I was just said, you know what? It's just, they're probably just testing it out for, for the Porto game, possibly. You know, they want to do all that stuff for the Porto game, get the atmosphere, the flags and everything going, uh, get, get, get everyone up for it. Um, you know, they had two for one, I think, drinks and everything. So they so they pulled pulled out all the stops to get the atmosphere going. And you was there, Dan. What what was it what was it like, man? What what was it um, you know, obviously in, in the lead up to the to the kickoff and everything and we, off the back of that, you know, obviously performance on Wednesday. Yeah, man, they definitely did a, uh, the the club did a great job with trying to 
get the fans going. I mean, before I left out, there were email, I had quite a few emails about, you know, yeah, get behind the team and the support and the atmosphere and the two for one and and all of that. So there was a lot of, of effort that went into um ensuring that the the whole um the whole vibe was just vibrant and we yeah they, I, they definitely had a vested interest in um, in ensuring that they did given our recent um performances against newcastle um yeah of late um so yeah it was it was it was a good result man and it was a great result i was happy to see um we were so loud normally newcastle newcastle fans they travel really well um but honestly we were just like you said mike it was a really good performance in the first half it's one of the loudest that i, I remember the ground being in recent times as well um mm. so it was fantastic it was a fantastic environment to be in um uh, for the portal game we're gonna need we're gonna need to double that i'd say yeah i think um for me now it's like Arteta is almost like us in terms of he he you know they say football fans have got long memories you know um, you know and and we remember stuff so if there's a if there's a even the remotest slight against against us he remembers it and he uses that as fuel to get yeah. you know to, to get to, to to get into the players heads to get them you know to uh, fired up to to do something, we've seen him do it before. We saw him do it last season. We've, he's used that in the All or Nothing documentary with Brentford with Ivan Tony and stuff like that. I'm sure he's going to do the same for Porto. And obviously, Odegaard said at the end, um, you know, uh, at the game that he, you know, he, we were reminded about what happened uh, at their place. Um, yeah. Do you think that you know it's great? It's obviously it's good that he's using that, but do you think that there's there's only so many times you can use that, and it's just a case of the players that just have to come out and perform and, and just just do the business rather than having to, to you, know, you know be professional in a sense but it's good that Arteta has that in his locker to use to get into players heads in their psyche but what was your thoughts on 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 just the way we started that that first off because obviously people were talking about the formation and you know who, who should we bring in I think everybody said um Jorginho was the right shout um but yeah what was your thoughts on 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 the, the, you know the ways I say I use that to get get them fired up, and you know the lineup and the performance in that first half. What was your thoughts on it? Well, to, to start with, I think there is nothing. I think Arteta should continue doing what he's doing. If he's uh, g'ing up the players, you, uh, for me, I, I personally, if I was in the squad, I, if I was lucky enough to play for Arsenal. I had Arteta doing that three games. I would love it. I would love it every single time. Even though you have to have your own self motivation and uh, ability to prepare as, prepare as a professional for a game which is huge well every game as you said is is, is huge but i think it, it doesn't it doesn't harm that you've got someone like a sergeant major shouting the odds into your ears and reminding you of what happened and we're up for revenge and we're going to have to deal with this and we're going to win we're going to we're going to get one our own back today i don't think there's a problem with it at all i think i think it's it's good leadership in my opinion um uh and i don't think it does any harm to be honest so that's that um Going into this game, I I normally very positive as as you know, and I did have concerns because I thought coming off the back of a great start from the new year, five wins on the trot, twenty one goals, I thought Luminek, and then all of a sudden we didn't even get a shot on target against Porto. Is that going to not physically affect the players, but is it going to emotionally and mentally affect the players? I wasn't so sure. And then of course Newcastle, the Newcastle, they can they can be dangerous. They can be dangerous. They they you know they were probably one of the names have been spoken about title challenges before the season began so you know it's not an it's not, it's not an easy game but i did not expect this at all the the formation i think helped by bringing in Jorginho in sitting at the base and he obviously had rice to be at the eight and obviously make allowed habits to to function as a nine and it looks like that seems to be the position where he is is best suited uh, we will all i think all of us had said it at the start of the season when he was brought in, we didn't know what his role was. Where is he going to play? How is he going to affect the team? Uh, his inclusion had unbalanced it in the, at the start of proceedings by party having to drop to a right back and then inverted right back at that. And it just didn't work. And I think now, I think for me, he's found his position. If you're not going to have him start Jesus in that lineup, and by doing that, also, I think it allows Saka and Martinelli to be more fluid. You know, so many times that they they were Martinelli was found at the right, or he was found in the centre. I mean, for 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 the goal, the, his assist for Havertz, 
he moved from left to right, didn't he, to, to collect the a great pass from Jorginho. So I, I think yeah. I think it really helped. I think it was a very cl- a clever lineup, and it showed right from the start. We were so aggressive, so positive, so much intensity. You know, um, I, I, I listened to um, uh, Daniel's vlog, and he summed it up. It, it just we, we didn't give him a chance. You know, he suffocated them. Havertz and Odegaard were closing yeah. down the defenders like nobody's business. And I yeah. just think it was just a wonderful all-round performance. I think every player played their part, including Raya. You know, I wasn't quite warm to Raya when he first came because I love Ramsdale. But you know what? Yeah. I'm starting to warm to him because I think he's very authoritative in the box, when he, especially when collecting a, a, a part, you know, a pass or a cross. He seems to have that air of uh, calmness about him. And he also could have, his distribution could have led to a great goal, which unfortunately Havertz put wide. So yeah. they all played their part. And I think it yeah. was, for me, I'll go and say on record, I think it's one of the best performances or 45 minutes performance I've seen for decades. I can't remember it being that good from start to finish. It was almost literally flawless. Yeah. It was, it was, it was almost, um, I don't know, it was like, it was almost like a violent, you know, they just, like, they didn't beat us, but they took, they took our dinner money and um, or they took our little little brother's dinner money, and they said we're 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 coming for you, and you know all the different analogies you want to take, but it was like it, they took it personally, you know, like that Michael Jordan um, last dance thing, Steve Steve will like that reference, but yeah, it was like we 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 really took it personally, you know, we got a corner after fifteen mm-hmm. seconds, um, you know, and and like you said, both of you said in in as you said in the vlog, and as you said here, um, Neil Havertz, that was his best performance, um. Of the season without without a shadow of a doubt and you know it's just interesting seeing how he was playing in that first half you know because he was dropping off in in a as a double ten with with Odegaard and then they were both pressing and you know and he it, it just they just didn't know what to do and, and in relation to what you said about the most dominant performance Neil um this was the first time Newcastle didn't register a shot in the first half of a Premier League game in almost a decade um uh, so yeah it, it's it's a that's pretty. It's pretty mental. Well, Newcastle, who are renowned for being on the front foot, I know they're a bit, you know, it's almost like mini Atletico Madrid sort of um, tactics and slowing the game down. But that backed up with what we've done defensively for the last couple of games shows you that this is this isn't a fluke. You know, Newcastle were no mugs. They did try to do their slowing down the game, pretending they were injured. I think Livermento went down like he was injured after three minutes to slow the game down, and then Trippier did as well. Um, and and basically there was a little thing. Well, if you if you're injured and the video comes on, you're going to be off for 30 seconds or a minute. So then he decided to get back up again. So they did try it. They did try their their usual usual tactics. Um, but yeah, the first goal was 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 again set piece um, delivery from Saka, who we'll talk about later with his numbers and um, you know some of the stuff again that's been spoken about him. But yeah, um, obviously Botman on goal, which, which was a shame. It would have been nice if Gabriel scored it again. But then the second goal, which again featured Jorginho, which now I think, as you said, Neil, it, he's played in the big games, hasn't he? He's played against City. You know, he was pivotal in that game. Um, the only game that he kind of um, was, was a bit of a slip up was when he literally slipped up against Tottenham and allowed him to equalise. But other than that, uh, whenever he's come in, he's he's done a job, and I think he he's he, as long as he's fit, he has to start against Porto to 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 go against that that low block they're gonna they're gonna put down against us. But the second goal, yeah, um, came from him. He's passed to Martinelli, and you know, you know, here on Arsenal, above all, we're we're fair. We we want to do things, you know, fairly. You know, you know, we're not. You know, we know there's a lot of controversy about the goal that Newcastle scored. So we just want to show that the ball w- was in. You know, he didn't cross the line. So you can just see here that the ball is in, you know. Um, so Gary Neville and Carragher don't have to appear on the Emirates pitch to do any of their nonsense like they did last time. Here's another angle. Yet yeah, the ball is in. It's in. It's in. So, um, you know, we just want to make sure they do things properly. And here's another angle. And it's and it's in. Yeah, you can see that as well. You know, so... Uh, but yeah, if you want to do things properly here, you know what I mean? <laughs> do things properly. <laughs> um, but I, I, I can't really think of much more to say, really. I want to touch on the back four because Ben White, 
um, he, he, and and Gabriel, I think they've been absolutely tremendous the last si since the restart. I think we keep saying it, but Kirio as well. I mean, again, some of the balls he was playing down the line to Martin Lady Dan. You know, he's he, it's it's not a case of if Zinchenko's fit or even Tommy Asu if he's fit that they come straight into the side now, is it? Because you know the guys, you know, he's, he's a threat at set pieces as well as we saw with, with the goal he scored later on. Um, but is it a case of now that if we look at the, the go back to the Porto game and the fact that um, when the game was kind of petering out a bit, he didn't bring anybody on, you know, like from the bench, like, you know, um, ESR or, 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 or Nelson. Is it basically a case of we have to keep these guys fit again? And are we skating close to the scenario that we were last season? That maybe you know we we can't you know he, he can't overpay these guys, but he's got no choice, has he? He he has to he's got twelve more games in the league. He has to do this, hasn't he? But what's your thoughts on Kivior and how you know do do does he disrupt the balance and harmony now that he's he's built up in this with, with these guys that have come in? I think Kirior is he's coming into his own really. Um I guess it's hard when you're a squad player and you're you just getting a few minutes here and there every now and then. It's hard to really make an impact. And it's almost like you are waiting for that chance for someone to get injured or suspended. Um in order in order to come in and have your chance. I must say this lad has come in and he's taken it. Um for me, Azini does not walk straight back into that team at all. Neither does Tommy. Um with Kiwi or it feels like a, a, there's a more okay. We don't have the inverted thing, but we it feels like we've got definitely much more of a stable um, back four. And there's something to be said around having four kind of natural centre backs across across the, the line of four. There, something that I know Pep um, does as well. So maybe Arteta has kind of modelled that from from um, Arteta has modelled that from Pep, perhaps. But it seems to work, um, and I would I wouldn't be changing that. Um, and in terms of like the personnel and, and, and looking at how we can manage for the rest of the season, absolutely, we have to learn from last year, man, because last year was a car crash in terms of how players were knackered and they were just overplayed, and that that basically impacted us for the running last year. Um, there was a point this season I was getting I was getting a bit worried about Ben White because he looked really fatigued and really tired. Mm. But he seems to have come through that. Apparently, he was carrying a bit of a knock for quite a while. Yeah. Um, and I've been impressed with um, with the obviously the partnership with, with the two lads in the middle. Uh, it's, it's been fantastic. I must say, Gabriel, I do feel is a massive unsung hero this season. I know we talk about Saliba a lot as gen in general Arsenal fans. We talk about Saliba loads, uh, but Gabriel, the the level of improvement from the last couple of years to now. Um, you know, I, I must shout him out, really. Credit where it's due. Before, he was he, he seemed like he always had a mistake in him. Um, but now I heard someone say the other day, one of the pundits saying, yeah, actually, he looks like he's a real nightmare to... If you're like a... a if you're a number nine, he's absolutely a nightmare to play against um, because he's big, he's strong, he's quick, mm. uh, he's aggressive. So shout out to Gabs, man. But yeah, so yeah. I, I wouldn't change in anything, Mike, at all. I would not be... Nah, it stays as it is for Porto as well. Stays as it is. Maybe bring Jorginho in again. Yeah, I, I think if anything, they have to come in to, to stock up the bench, basically. Yeah. You know, they, and, and then they, you know, they get back in. Obviously, Jesus was on the bench, but he wasn't fit. You know, and he was only there. You know, in in case of an emergency or something happened. You know, because he didn't even come on, did he? Even though he made all those subs. Um, but I think you're right. You know, he. You know, as long as they're all fit. You know, those guys should be walking straight back in. They need to be on the bench and ready, you know, because even though we shouldn't look more than the game ahead, obviously you've got Sheffield United next, but, you know, you've got that City game looming, you know, in the in horizon. Um, obviously, you've got, you've got some obviously big games before them, but you want to go to City with, you know, everyone, you know, fit. it's almost like we, it's a shame we can't play them next week, you know, you, you, you know the way, the way things are, because they look a bit ropey as well. You know, Pep's been moaning about the fixture list, saying about, you know, um, we've played too many games and thanks so much for the for the for the lovely cal you know, calendar we've got. And it's like, well, 
you're gonna go around winning all the trophies, you know, it's, it's the same thing, you know. You exactly. don't complain, you know, same thing Cop was doing last year, you know, going for well, the year before, going for the quadruple, and then moaning about, oh, we've got all these games. Well, you know, don't be winning all your games, you know, you, you, you know, you've got to give something up, you know. You know, you, you you just play your kids. You know, your kids are good enough to win the league cup anyway. So you should have just done that from 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 time. You know, and uh, just do it that way. But um, but no, you're right. I think um, you know we, we've it's, it's going to be great to have options back. And I think we need against Sheffield United. It'd be great to have maybe Zinchenko or Tommy Asu on the bench at least, and then just keep building uh, t- towards that. Um, Neil, um, let's talk about Saka because obviously there's been a lot of conversations about him uh, whether he's world class or not and um obviously you know your your favorite pundit uh rio ferdinand has sort of been leading <laughs> leading that that bad wagon uh-huh. saying oh you know this and that about him and um yeah uh, just just a silly conversation because it's funny you look at saka's numbers and uh he he scored uh his goal on Saturday night, I keep thinking it's Sunday, his goal on Saturday night was his 16th goal of the season, which broke, which beat his record because he had 15 was his, was his best record before. He's got 12 assists and he's, and he needs one more to best that as well. So, you know, he's already, you know, he's, he's, he's all, you know, we've got 12 games left. He's, you know, an extra game in the Champions League. He's going to, he's going to break that as well. It's funny how, um, for me, you know, I've, I've been, a little bit, you know, look at him. Oh, he needs to do more. Needs to do more. But he's a what? How old is he? He's twenty-one. You know, he's he's, he's a he's a kid. You know, he's English. He's he's got all these numbers, amazing numbers, and he's still getting doubted by those in the media and stuff. And you wonder, is it because of the shirt he wears, the, the badge on his on his shirt, or is it because of something else? Because I kind of think that sometimes, where you know. Uh, Yes, there is an Arsenal hate. There, is, there definitely is in the media, you know, that where they always want to play down, play the players that we've got and how good they are. But you know, you, you, you know, you, you, they're always talking up Foden. You know, they're always talking up, you know, Madison. Um, they're always talking up all these other players that looked particular. You know, there's something. There's a particular look. But then there's this kid here who is who does everything right. And they openly said last week, I think in one show, oh, isn't it great how Saka, he get he gets kicked from pillar to post and he doesn't complain. So they're admitting that he does get kicked pillar to post, even though then they turn around and say, oh, well, he's, he's overprotected. You know, so one minute it's the agenda is, oh, we, why is Arteta coming out saying that? But then the next week they're saying, oh, yeah, he, he does get kicked pillar to post, but isn't it great how he does it? So there's that as well. But what's your thoughts on, on, on that issue and the fact that, um, Saka has just said, you know what, I don't care. I'm just concentrating on getting the win and, and doing my best for Arsenal and everything else can just, whatever. But what's your thoughts on that, man? First and foremost, um, what um, Daniel was saying earlier really resonated with me about burnout, some of the players looking tired. And look, I'll, I'll be honest with you both. I, I thought I saw that in Saka this season. I thought mm. he was, he still was getting the numbers but because we had, we had we had raised the bar for himself and for the fans watching him to such a level that even a slight drop off, we're noticing it because he's, he's that good for me. And I thought, how, how many times have you heard me say, give the guy a rest, please. Just just even one game, give him rest. He started 113 prem prem appearances or something in his in the last God knows, you know, 113. He's just always there. He's always reliable. And I I've. I've got to say, I've got it wrong. This man, I don't know what he's made of, but he's made of something really strong. And I'm not just talking physically, because obviously he's shown that he's resilient to that because he gets kicked off the park. He doesn't get the protection that he deserves. Being the star boy for me, not just for Arsenal, but actually for England, yet all the other English players seem to get special treatment. Shearer always did. Harry Kane always did. Gascoigne always did. But when it comes to Saka... No, no protection at all. Let him be kicked kicked left, right and centre. But what, what I love about him, he's he gets up, he dusts himself off. And like you said, he just says, I just want to get on with it. And he showed the same resilience when he got all that rubbish, when he missed that penalty. I'll always re- remind people of that because that was disgusting. The amount of abuse and disgusting, abhorrent abuse. And they are not real people for me. They're this, 
I, I, not just on this channel, of course, but they're scum. And he, he took it. And what does he do? He steps up in the next season and he scores two, two or three very vital penalties. I mean, that picture is, I think it's very poetic, that picture, because I think that sums up what this conversation is about. He's made of some real stern stuff. Yes, we all admire his playing ability, his skills and everything else, but it's his mental at attitude and his, 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 his attributes to that capacity is beyond, the, beyond anything I've ever seen in probably most of the players that I've watched in all the years I've been following football. There, he's, he's, he's just made of something really tough. And, you know, look at him now. He, he may have had a slight drop off coming mm. back from, I think that break, that break has done all the players, like you were talking about Ben White earlier, Daniel. Mm. I think that break, he's almost re rejuvenated. It's like, it's affected all yeah. the players in such a positive way. Saka is now assisting, scoring goals. And look at what he did against Newcastle. I mean, the goal he scored was was incredible. I mean, I didn't see a way through and he did it. You yeah. know what? That reminded me of a little bit, just a little bit in, in a different way. Do you remember when we beat Newcastle 7-3 and ha Walcott got the hat-trick? Oh, and I yeah. think it was his hat-trick goal. He actually fell over and he got up and he still drove through all the defenders. It kind of reminded me a bit of that. But that wasn't the only one. There was a other chance where he did the same thing. And I think yeah. it led to a save in the first half, I think it was. Yeah. And he was doing this all game. I mean, it... it <laughs> It doesn't matter what you people want to say about him, this narrative. I, 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 I think the guy is just mentally so strong. And then you've got to then look at his age. And for someone as young as that, my, I, I don't know whether he's had an amazing, well, he probably has had an amazing upbringing, but I, I don't know where he gets it from. He's got the minerals. And talking about the point you made right at the start, you know, is it something else? I think it could well be because what, what other explanation can it be? What you you mm. you, know, you you've got to scratch your head and think about it. And you know it's not nice talking or thinking about these things, but you you're left with what else could it be? And I and I think it, I think it's wrong. I think he's he should start getting the credit he deserves. Um, and if he's not world class, then you can you please describe what the definition of a world class player is? Because he's getting the numbers in, even when he's off form by his standards, yeah. he's mm -hmm. still getting the numbers in. And, you know, to have done what he's done this season with still, what, arguably a third of the season left? Yeah. Still more to come? I'm sorry, guys. He's yeah. amazing. He's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous that the numbers that he's got, he's, he's broke, he's already scored more goals than than he had, he's had all season, all, all, all his career. Um, and for me, the last, the first half of the season, for me, was an off season, a, a, a down season for him. You know, he, he could, he was getting the numbers, but you could see in the eye test, you know, Daniel probably would, would say more, you know, because he's he's been, you know, you've been to games as well, Neil, and you'll be able to see what he's like off the ball, whereas, you know, in the camera you know, and when you're watching the game. Um, but you, you you would have seen him, Dan, and see, you know, he he's not, you know, he gets the ball, he plays it 10 yards back to the, he doesn't beat, he doesn't beat his man, he doesn't engage his, his guy. He's looking for the contact all the time and just playing it off. But it looks like, though, it, for me, it's like, it seems blatantly obvious now that him and Ben White were carrying they were definitely carrying something yeah. and that break came at the perfect time because they look literally look like they've been fired out of a gun uh, a, a gun now the way that they they've played there was a chance he had in the first half where the ball came down and he, and he had about three three Newcastle players around him I don't know how he managed to wriggle it through but he had a shot and carrier saved it um you know he, he you know it's just just mad mad stuff I mean he was doing bits in the in the Champions League um, you know, admittedly, especially at home in the, in the Champions League, but yeah, um, yeah, well, yeah, what's your thoughts on, on that whole debate, uh, uh, Dan? You know, you just think it's you know, like Neil, it's just it's just the media just finding another thread to they, they found a thread on you know, on, on, on one of those expensive Arsenal merch that you can get, and they're just pulling on it and they're just trying to see what, what mess they can make, yeah, man. Uh, you know, you know what. What I would say is what I know me and you spoke a lot last season, Mike, about Saka and what we wanted to see more of. And I guess in one way, in many respects, we were, we were looking back now, we we're probably probably being quite harsh on him, to be honest. The lad's what, just gone 22. Fantastic numbers for a, a converted left back. <laughs> um, and I think what really impressed me about the Newcastle game the other day, it wasn't his goal. It was. It wasn't. You know how much he terrorized um, Livermento and all those guys. It was how. It was what he. The work that he did when he 
put that assist o- across for for um for who was it Havertz? Who was it he gave the assist for? It was Havertz, wasn't it? I might nearly might not might nearly set up set up that goal. Uh, the, the the when he slid sl- it across. Um, Havertz. No, I'm thinking out. about a different game actually. A different game. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So his assists. So the last few assists that he's been he's been uh, he's been given. Um, what's been really imp- impressing me is at, he's now actually going round a lot more. And yeah, he's beating his, his cutting back, actually, yeah yeah cutting yeah. back with his right foot. Um, I like that. Last season it was if he couldn't get something over with his left foot, he would be going backwards, yeah. or sometimes he would be taking shots that maybe he wasn't in the best position to take. But I've been really impressed in terms of his, his, his assist play. With how he's he's mixing it up more and going down the line. Um, with regards to the comment made by the comments made by Rio in the media, do you know? In all honesty, I just in all honesty, I, we think what we think of him. I just I just don't focus on on it to be honest. Um, you know, there is a there is a there is obviously some kind of drive to compare him to Foden. Look, Foden is nearly three years older than Saka. Um, Saka's a current double English player of the year. Um, his numbers are better. He starts more games than Foden. He's trusted more than Foden. Foden is a, a central midfielder who's being played out of position because he has two fantastic world-class talents in the middle, keeping him out in Rodri and De Bruyne. Yeah. Um, so he has to play out wide where he's not as effective. He's, yeah. he's, not, he's not a winger. Um, he, I don't think he has the same tools as Saka. He's got some tools that are perhaps a bit better than Saka's in terms of his ball control and his his yeah. his, 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 his one-on-one ability. Maybe, like that, yeah, yeah, maybe that's granted. He's he's fantastic at that. But in terms of um, how much you know we rely on Saka, how much we kind of, we he's galvanised us as Arsenal fans. He's made us kind of fall in love with the club again after difficult times. Um, that impact that he's had on the club is, you know, you can't underestimate that. And, you know, I'm not going to underestimate Foden neither. I love him as a player. I think he's fantastic. Good player, man. I wish we had him at Arsenal, to be honest. You know, let's not deny the talent that he is. Uh, but however, to pitch these two against each other is just silly. It's unfair. And to be honest, Rio's, Rio's got nothing better to talk about because none of his, not, his club ain't producing nothing. So real. If you're listening, yeah. if you're watching this, focus on your own club, mate. What have they got coming through? You ain't got a Foden, you ain't got a Saka, you ain't got an ESR, you ain't got no one, mate. So just chill out. Both of them are fantastic English talents, and I hope that Southgate or whoever's the manager can figure out a way to play them all all together. But um, I wouldn't swap Saka for for anyone to be honest. No, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, everything you both said. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's funny, you know, when they, I think someone brought up, brought Rio Fernand up on that and said, you don't think uh, um, uh, Saka is world class, but you think Foden is. Um, so who starts, you know, for England? Um, he basically said Saka. And he says, <laughs> so you're not, putting, you're not putting Foden in. And he's like, oh, you can't, I, I can't. So I was like, okay. You know what I mean? It's just you just you know t- totally crash your your own argument. So I just don't you know just again just just I think people just want to chip it chip in it because they know you know we we we'll, they'll get the traction they'll get the, mm-hmm. the, the, the 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 people will get will get triggered and some people will go off to five to handle some people will be you know more intellectual intellectual about it in terms of the response and what have you like we yeah. have tonight but um. But yeah, it, it is it is uh, it is ridiculous. Scoring I mean, with just... both feet as well, guys. He's scoring with both feet. Well, yeah, well. yeah. He's I mean, great. the fact that he's he's as Dan said as well is like how he beats people. He's beating people now. He put a crossover in the first half on his right foot to Martin Ellie. It was a, it was a wonderful move. It probably would have been one of the best goals you know we scored. It was a wonderful move, and then Martin Ellie sort of heads it over. Yeah, um, yeah. And then there's a bit where um, um, Jorginho is playing playing the centre back for a little bit and Saliba's playing defensive mid and 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 he they swap they swap places. I don't know, I don't know what we would do. We we were just doing some mad crazy football. <laughs> uh it was a, a, a great to see and um it, it was just mad how the the uh the narrative on the commentary that I had it was basically oh you know it was just trying to get they were willing Newcastle to get back into the game. Yeah. yeah it wasn't it wasn't about 
Arsenal playing such great football and everything and stuff like that. It's like, oh, yeah. Newcastle are, are not at the races. Um, they just got to hope they can nick something, you know, and hopefully they'll be back. You know, it was literally willing Newcastle back into it. And it was like, you know, this is this is mad. This is this is crazy. You should be appreciating what you're seeing. This is like another statement win, you know, from, from, from a team that no one's given uh, a chance to, despite all the metrics and everything saying that we... Are the, are the best, you know, got, got all the best numbers. Mm. But it's just, again, it's that whole Arsenal, um, you know, any, anyone but Arsenal sort of thing, you know, um, everyone's worried now because, you know, we, we're, we're challenging for a title two years in a row. Everybody said that we're not going to, we're going <laughs> to find it hard, didn't we? You know, Carragher was saying, oh, no, Arsenal are going to fall off, you know, they're going to find it hard with Champions League and, and uh, you know, and, and going for the Premier League again, it's going to be, you know, his beloved Liverpool are, are challenging. But, Let's see what happens over the next couple of games. They've got a few injuries yeah. um, now to deal with. Um, City, are obviously, you know, gonna get their usual supplements delivered, and we're gonna we're gonna boost up the table, go on their um, run where they destroy. You know, the, the, the performance. You know, I know you said um, in your show, in, in another show um, tonight, Neil, with um, with Rich over and over and over, Arsenal over and over again. You know, um, you said that the, the, the performance reminds you of the. Um, you know, invincible is the way that we used to dispatch teams in, in that first half. But it reminded me a little bit of and what we've been doing over the last couple of weeks is, is probably City to a certain extent and how dominant they've been over the last couple of years where they've done that, exactly that to teams that come to the Etihad where they just cannot get out and they've actually destroyed uh, uh, people, you know, obviously when they had the likes of Aguero and stuff. So it, it, it's it's amazing that we're doing that but in a different way you know we're doing we're doing it in our in our own way people are saying oh he's copying pep and everything and i think the elements that he has he has tried to copy him and he's tried to do it but i think now he's realized i've got to try and do it my own way and and, and, and he is and it's just it's just amazing to see and um let's hope we've like 12 games to go and obviously the world champions league game you know we've got the harder running on paper but mm-hmm. you know the game isn't Played on paper, people will say we had the easier running last year, and look what happened. So, <laughs> look at the points we dropped uh, 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 last year. But, um, but yeah, I, I come back. To, I come back to you, Dan. What's your What's your thoughts on Sheffield United? Then, do we do we? Um, you know, we've got obviously we're, this time next week the game would have, would have almost finished, right? I think I think around this time. Um, so we've got quite a quite a you know got seven days to to recover. I imagine he's given the players maybe a day off <laughs> because oh. we've come back from Porto. I think he said they had one, they had half a day's training session to prepare for for the game, which was crazy, and then to put in that performance. But what's your what do you do? Do you do you take it take not not take your foot off the gas, but do you maybe bring somebody in um, to rotate? Considering last time round we beat them five, was it five nil? Eddie got his hat trick. Um, or do you just go the same? Maybe do you put Trossard back in and then take Jorginho out? Maybe. But what, what would you do, Dan? Would you just keep it the same or, or change it up a little bit? <sighs> uh, it's it's quite a few days before the Porto game, Porto game isn't it? Uh, the Porto yeah. game is on the 12th. Yeah. And this game is on the what, 4th? Yeah, we've got, we got Brentford before that, haven't we, as well? Brentford and then this, yeah. Yeah. Um, just looking at how Sheffield United play at home, you know the the, the quite the physical kind of low block, just kind of reminds you a bit of um, a bit of the old old Blackburn kind of thing, really. Although the new managers tried to get them playing a bit, um, what would I go with in that game? I don't know. I I'd, I'd, I'd definitely keep the back four the same. That's hundred percent staying the same. Martinelli and Saka pick themselves. Um, I think he's still got to have that threat in there. Um, and Rice picks himself, as does Martin. So I think it's just debatable who plays, who plays the eight and who plays the nine. Um, you could bring Eddie in and let him have a run out, um, or Jesus might be ready to start by then but other than them, them two positions I think every, every, everything else should stay the same especially in the back four um, the rest is is fluid we haven't really had a stable number nine this season anyway I've mm. got my own frustrations around Jesus um, we've spoken about Mark, um, Michael um, it's an area of development 
the club certainly need to look at that. But um, yeah, you know, do you bring in Trossard? He's been doing well. He's been, you know, doing well when he's been brought in. Do you play Havertz because Sheffield United are a big physical team? Do you bring him in to start the nine? Probably. And then let Jorginho start in the middle, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I think um, it's going to be interesting because obviously Brentford got getting beat tonight, I think. Uh, losing 4-2 so obviously and they're going to try and come and do the same thing you know low block and all that stuff what, what about you Neil would you, would you keep it the same would you would you um, maybe bring one one body in maybe refresh it back to the the Porto and Burnley and West Ham line up or would you I've got mixed feelings about it uh, only because of this reason I think if we had been playing uh, Porto sooner I would want to see a couple of changes just just to protect the players, but because we've got a bit of a gap and it's Brent that we're playing at home afterwards. I actually wouldn't change it. Um, I agree, I hear what Daniel's saying, and I, and I don't think there's any wrong or right answer. But we're playing so well under the system, and they are physical. And we, you know, if we keep Habits, Rice, and Jorginho there, they'd be lads. I know we got the big lads at the back, but then we got the more, the more outfield players, also big lads. Something I've always been crying for when Wenger tried to em emulate Barcelona with you know ten number tens and you know all okay. great players in their own right, but no one really physical. Then you look at what he had when he started, where he had a mixture of like real you know like the, the meatheads along with the talented players. I think that was that's where we, we are now. I think we've got that that nice balance back, and I wouldn't want to change that when we're up against the more physical sides, especially away from home. Mm. Now there is obviously a shout to start Eddie because obviously he, he scored a hat trick against them. Um, and you know, do you give him another chance? Maybe he likes he'll he'll carry that vein, which vein will form that form on into Sheffield. Went you know another the return leg against them, if you like. But I I I why why try and mend something that isn't broken? I've always had that that adage. And yes, I think we do have to worry about rotation further down the line when we you know we got these tough away games to consider. We may you know I'm going to say we're going to beat Porto anyway. It's only one nil at half time. We're going to beat them. So we're going to progress in the Champions League. I think, yes, we'll have to consider all of that then. Then we might have to bring Jesus on, think about Trossard. I think keep it the same. Maybe one change, maybe a couple of people coming off the bench after 60 minutes if we're doing well in the game. You know, but definitely I, I don't think we should we should tinker too much. And and Kirill, as Daniel said, what an amazing player. I think he's 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 the he's the right, you know, Sinjenko as good as he is when the game is played in the way that favours him, is great to watch. And then Tommy Asu, you can't complain. He's always put in a shift and he's always done well. Yeah. But I think Kirio adds a bit of bal defensive balance, which it's almost like for me a, 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 an amalgamation of Tierney and Sinchenko in a weird way, that he's got the attributes of both. And I think he's yeah. so solid. He's, he's just so solid. I, I think just keep the guy there. He's, he's playing so well, ever so well. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's my take on it. Yeah, it'll be interesting. This is what This is where it's all going to... Well, down to isn't it now we want to get get ourselves in the best shape uh up until uh that porter game and then obviously we've got the uh i think possibly chelsea after that depending on whether they win uh their cup game because if they beat leeds then we won't play that game so the last game would be the porto game and then the next game after that would be um man city so uh, after the international break so it's all kind of again, it's all going down, heading down towards that that showdown, and then obviously they play Liverpool before then. I think they've got, I think they've got United at the weekend, and and then they've got uh, Liverpool after, um, you know, a couple of weeks after that. So it's all going to be very interesting uh, in this next couple of weeks. Just hope we going down to the Etihad, uh, get a result, and and it sort of takes us, you know, above or or beyond, you know, beyond beyond them, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. I think I would, I'll pretty much would keep the team. That probably revert back to the to the to the team before that played against uh, West Ham and, and Burnley away from home, and with, with Trossard just let him float around and, and stuff like that. And um, because I because I'm not sure, you know, I know he's going to have the time to, to recover, but whether Georgina can play. If it was like three or four games a day, sorry, between the games, he probably I probably wouldn't. But maybe because there's been a week. Uh, and then, then we've got to turn around, obviously, to play Brentford, um, which I don't think he, I don't know whether he play that. He might do again because it's going to be low block and he's going to need people to try and pick passes through, and like he did the other night. So yeah, you probably yeah, it's going to be interesting. But that's why Arteta has played all that big money 
uh, to make these decisions. But uh, before we before we uh, before we leave, we've got to have a shout out to um, to our, our brilliant skipper Odegaard, who it was frustrating for him yesterday. I think there was a couple of times where he could have pulled the trigger, but he was looking to pass it, maybe uh, uh, you know over over egg it a little bit. But no, he's been on on great form and he led the line. As you know, as, as you guys said earlier, he, he's pressing. Was immense, but he uh, he's been he's been very busy, and uh, as we know, and uh, you know, obviously he's 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 got a new vocation. He can do stuff while the game's being played. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> so he's he's been very very busy. I don't know how he manages to do it to pick out a pass with a with a Canon XL or whatever a nine thousand has tucked tucked down his um his his shin pads, and he's uh still you know he's, he's doing this while well, tuning up. I don't know how he managed to do that, but yeah, amazing stuff from our captain. Uh, Captain Marvel, mate. Um, fantastic stuff. So thanks, to Neil. <laughs> Neil, thanks for your, your time again. It's, um, you cool. know, it's a it's pleasure awesome. to have you on. Oh, thank and, you so um, much. Nice to see you. Uh, Daniel, brilliant, you man. Brilliant being on, Daniel. Thank and, you so much. And uh, to Daniel as well. Um, we'll link up, link up again uh, very soon. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's hope we, we can just keep this run going. It's been a fantastic start to, to 2024, rather Porto blip, but that's hopefully all it was. It was definitely a blip. Um, and we'll it's only half time, out. Michael. It's only half time. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, someone said, you know, if you're one nil down at half time, do you think the game's up? No, it doesn't matter who you play against. If you're one nil down at half time, you, you, you know, you've, you've got a chance, haven't you? So, yeah, so yeah, we, we, we've just basically got to do the repeat of what we did, um, on, on Saturday night. And I think, uh, there was a port, there was a Porto, uh, 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 scout and the, and the newspaper there, and they were talking about us saying they expected Arsenal to to wobble a bit, and and they didn't. You know, they ran Newcastle over, so they they know that you know we, they know that we're going to be ready. They they got a taste of that. Like I said, I think that whole stuff before the game with the flags and stuff, and I think that was a yeah, yeah. bit yeah. of a taster, you know, and um, and just see what, what what's coming uh, in a couple of weeks' time. But no, thanks guys for your for your t- for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, appreciate all the support. Um, this will be obviously on YouTube and also on uh, all the platforms that you get your, your podcasts on, obviously Spotify, Acast, and Anchor. And uh, yeah, that's it, pretty much it. Um, you know, it's been amazing to get a little bit of revenge on Newcastle, put them in their place. They've been ticked off. Aston Villa, you're on notice, you're next. But before that, uh, we've got obviously uh, FC Porto in the Champions League before we um, hopefully get a nice quarterfinal tie against uh, against someone. Hopefully we can, uh, who knows, we might get Pep again and then he can complain about more of uh, his fiction list getting clogged up. Who knows? We'll see. But uh, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate appreciate your time as always. Uh, love to your families and love to all you Guinness out there. Come on, you Reds. Man, remember. Giroud into the box.